Of course, if we can conduct a hypothesis test on those differences between matched pairs data, then we can also create a confidence interval for the differences in matched pairs data. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. So you're creating a confidence interval, and it's for the mean. It's for mu d, the mean difference um, of matched pairs data. And this would be t interval on the calculator, but it would be on the differences. Actually, I just remembered. This particular page has a couple typos. I accidentally left the previous info from the patient, the Reiki therapy, and I accidentally left the probability plot the same as it was before. So allow me to switch out to a correct sheet. <laughs> Sorry about that. And then I can say this is for mu d, the mean difference. mean difference, not mean difference, mean difference. And on the calculator, it's T interval. So that's on the TI-84. And on StatCrunch, it's the same place we went before. So on StatCrunch, you would go to Stat, T Stat, and you would choose paired. It's the same place you go for hypothesis tests. I kind of like StatCrunch in that way because it's a one-stop shop. <laughs> you don't have to go to different places for the diff intervals versus the test. So it's just one thing and you choose paired. All right, so you can see it's running off the same bit as before. There's your point estimate right there, plus or minus, and there's your margin of error. So let me just make that really clear. Whoop, and there's another typo. It just occurred to me. This should be D-bar right here, not X-bar. I will fix that. And that same mistake is probably on this, but yep, indeed it is. I'll fix that for future. But if you're watching this in a later semester, you won't have to fix this. But in fall of 2020, fix that to a D-bar right on your exam notes packet as well, because that should be a D-bar in both places. Because the point estimate is the D-bar. So the D-bar is the point estimate, right? That's the center of your interval, right, D-bar. And then the margin of error is the whole back half of this, right? Right there. That's the margin of error. It's the same formula and idea that we used in section 10, or 9-1, excuse me. So margin of error plus or minus, or D-bar plus or minus the margin of error. So you take your point estimate plus or minus your margin of error, and you've built your confidence interval. And again, point estimate right here, margin of error right here. All right, now the conditions are still the same as they were for a hypothesis test. We would have to have a random sample, have it be a dependent sample. Of course, that's the two groups, or excuse me, one group measured twice. There we go. That's new. Like that. And then the rest of it's pretty much the same as we were doing in chapters 9 and 10. All right, so let's look at an example. We have the 2008 Olympics were full of controversy. I actually remember this happening. Um, about new swimsuits possibly providing unfair advantages to swimmers, leading to new international rules that came into effect January 1st, 2010, regarding swimsuit coverage and material. A study tested whether wearing wetsuits influences swimming velocity. So 2008 Olympics, they were really covered almost... Um, up to their heels in these kind of wetsuits. And there was a lot of controversy because this people that had those suits, did they have an advantage over the people that did not have those types of suits, etc. So it was a big controversy. So a random group of 12 competitive swimmers and triathletes swam 1,500 meters at a maximum speed twice each, once wearing a wetsuit and once wearing a regular bathing suit. The orders of the trials were randomized because you don't want everybody to go wetsuit first then not wetsuit first because maybe they'd be more tired for the second trial, if that makes sense. So each time the maximum velocity in meters per second of the swimmer, among other quantities, was recorded. So this will be their maximum velocity that we're showing here. All right, explain why this is a dependent sample. Well, it's pretty obvious, right? It's one group of 12 swimmers measured twice. Measured once with the wetsuit and once without. I'll just say wetsuit. Oops, if I could spell the word suit. And no wetsuit. 
There we go. All right, so we're gonna find the differences for each swimmer, just as we did before. So I already have these typed into the calculator. So if you're using the calculator, you can type your wetsuit is in L1, your no wetsuit's in L2, go over to column three, go up to the L3, and type L1 minus L2, because I said that I want it to be wetsuit minus no wetsuit. I say it right here. Since we're doing wetsuit minus no wetsuit, that's L1 minus L2, right there. Those are the differences. All right, so I'm gonna type it right there. Wonderful. Now in StatCrunch, we don't have to do it that way. So let me grab StatCrunch real quick. I have the wetsuit and the no wetsuit. And actually I can do this when I go to run the confidence interval. So if I go to stat, T stat and paired right there, I can say sample one is wetsuit, sample two is no wetsuit. I'm actually gonna do a confidence interval looking ahead, just so you know, confidence interval, and you can have it find summary statistics, you can have it do a confidence interval plot, you can have it do several things if you're interested. QQ plot, who doesn't like that? And I want it to save those differences, that's key right there. So I'm gonna click save the differences. So if I do all of this and I click compute, it will find the differences right there for me. 0 0.08, 0 0.1, etc. So I would type or write those down on my sheet. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to pause. I'll be right back. All right, so I put all those values without you knowing it on my sheet. So either from the calculator or for stem, from StatCrunch, either way. And again, that normal probability plot, you can also see it on StatCrunch. So if I bring it back, it's one of the outputs that I had it draw right there. Um, technically, it's doing it backwards, so this is kind of like the mirror image um, across that diagonal line of the one we have on our paper, but it's, it's all right. It's the same thing. You can see better on the one that we have on our paper. This is from a different program, and as long as those dots are between the lines, which by the way, those lines are a confidence interval in and of themselves. That's what those lines represent. That's what this means up here, 95% CI. Then you're good. All right, so we know that we have random because it's given. It stated it was a random group of 12 competitors. So this is yes, because it was given. Number two, we need it to be a dependent sample. But of course, we already explained that up above, but we'll just say it again. So this is yes, because it was one group measured twice. Right, there was a wetsuit and a no wetsuit. And it's important to note that they didn't have everybody go wetsuit first. They had them r swim once with the wetsuit and once without, but they randomized it. So it's not like everybody's getting tired. That wasn't what was happening here. And if you noticed, all of these values are positive. That means that their max speed was always greater with the wetsuit. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna show that there's something going on here. There's a reason these suits are banned now. <laughs> all right, so dependent sample. Then we need the sample to be independent of the population. And I'm getting these right from up above on this page. Sample independent of the population. So that's where I'm getting that from. So you need little n to be less than 0.05 capital N. Well, 12, which is your sample size, is certainly less than 5% of all swimmers. I mean, all swimmers in the world, but even if you go with all competitive swimmers, I mean, triathletes and, and all of that, there's plenty of swimmers. <laughs> all your college teams, all your high school teams, no problem, right? This is, of course. And then the last piece, which is in over here, is normal. And that's, it's a close thing right there with that little dot, but it's close enough, right? So we're okay. It is normal. So this is yes, because the points are um, close to the line. They're linear-ish in the normal probability graph. So we've verified requirements and find all the differences. I'm going to stop right here because I didn't want this video to get too long and we'll come back in the next video for actually constructing the confidence interval and doing all of those steps in the next page.